today, Steve Chalk gave a, a presentation on biblical literacy, and he talked about those passages in Scripture and those points that we find ourselves when we're reading through passages and reading through Scripture um, that, that don't necessarily match up, that don't jive. Issues like Second Samuel to First Chronicles, um, and issues of uh, of reading through Scripture and saying, how does this really kind of apply to our life today, and how do we um, how do we take what we read, whether it's old or new, and say when, when Jesus doesn't really agree with what we find in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament doesn't seem to agree with the Old Testament, even in itself, um, how do we handle those issues? Um, and so he talked about issues kind of in modern times. So it was Tony Blair and George Bush with the Iraq War and how they used scripture to justify um, the war in Iraq and how we as the church um, let them do that, you know, let them stick to that. Um, and I myself find and, and you know, in the work that I'm doing with Red Letter Christians, um, Red Letter really is based around this idea that when Jesus spoke, he meant what he said. Um, and, and he, and it's important to, to kind of come around those words and come around those settings and say that when Jesus said, love your enemies, I'm pretty sure he meant don't kill them. Um, so so we, we, find, we find these Red Letters, we find these words to really live by, to passionately um, dive into and to, to give ourselves to. And then yet our world also uses scripture to justify violence, to, to maybe get caught up in, um, in the moment and say that we respond to violence with violence when Christ says, you know, to turn the other cheek, to walk the second mile. Um, so when Steve's talking about biblical literacy, um, he's really talking about these issues that, um, that while sometimes they seem heady, they really have a huge impact in our world. Um, and so he, he kind of brought it down to that level where it's understandable and, and dive in, and you can really dive into it. Um, yeah, and I just think it's a call for the church today to just dive into that even more. Um, yeah. So how is the Bible important to me um, in relation to what we've talked about here at Mesa today? So the, the, Bi the Bible essentially frames everything that, that we do, whether we know it or not, in, including me. Um, the, the, the topics that we had today, um, and when Steve talked about biblical literacy and how our viewing of the text affects the way we see our neighbors um, and how Pam discussed how we see um, the global economy, global economy actually, um, is deeply affected by the text, the Bible. Um, so for me, hearing those conversations helped me to, to find the, the big G gospel pieces that come from the beyond. Um, I'm very interested in finding out what those are and and living those, practicing those, and understanding which pieces come from someone from a very long time ago who is very good hearted, but just like me. And I may say that's a very good idea, but I can feel free to maybe let that go. So both of those conversations um, on how to read the Bible and uh, our economies really helped me process what the Bible means for me today and which pieces I need to I need to hold on to and which pieces I can I can be um, free to either hold or go and um, so Mesa has been good for that a few things there was there was quite a few suggestions um, uh, insights given by the speakers that kind of make you think twice. Um, uh, uh, biblical literacy, how we understand the Bible and the scripture and the, uh, and the word of God. Um, that was a, a contentious point uh, to I think a lot of people. Is, uh, it's something that we're, our foundations are built on as, as believers is this, the Bible is the, the, the written word of God. And, and so when someone says something different or, or tries to bring up a different understanding of that, then it's almost an affront. You're like, oh, wait, I need to think about that. So I think not just struggling with it, but I think it was good um, unless we are uh, challenged in our thinking, then we're not going to grow. So I think that was a good challenge. Um, I think uh, the understandings of, of equality and stuff, um, uh, both gender equality and ethnic equality and um, not an affront, but something that I'm passionate about. And when it starts, people start speaking about it, then it's, um, I get passionate about it, and, and, and you want to, um, 
you, you want to see some, you almost want to see some answers come out of it, but you know that it's not about the answers. We need to have the discussions. And so the discussions were, I think, really good about that. Um, I wish there had been perhaps more on, on the equality. Um, I think I, I wanted to see more. We talked a lot about, again, the identities and all that. And I'd love to have seen more talk on indigenous ways and some of the ancient ways that uh, we're trying to recover and restore. And we touched on them very briefly in, in a few different things. Um, I think there's a lot more in that that we could rediscover. Um, trafficking, one of the things that's been very confronting to me, which I think was a converting idea for the early church and needs to be regained as a converting idea again today, is the idea that we are all made in the image of God. When we can actually look at another person um, in the way of Jesus, who was the fully human one, in the process of looking at that person, I think that in, in those eyes... I think that then we are actually able to be welcoming.